Oh my goodness, I am so excited to talk about assassins with excellent fashion taste. What's that? We're not talking about Villanelle, the character played by Jodie Comer in Killing Eve? We're talking about the poetry form? Hey guys, I am Dr. Katie Yales from I Am Loud Productions, and in today's workshop, I'm going to teach you how to write a villanelle. The villanelle is a traditional poetic form which originated centuries ago in Europe, but is still commonly used by many contemporary poets. It relies on a set rhyme scheme with two repeating refrains to create a sort of circular feel, like a song with two choruses. In this workshop, I'll give you some background on the villanelle, I'll show you how it's structured, I'll give you plenty of examples, and I will lead you step by step through how to write one yourself. Just like the rest of the workshops in our Return to Form series, there are two ways to watch this video. The first approach is to watch the workshop and write along, so if you're going to do it that way, every time a screen comes up with a step on it, pause the video on that step, do whatever the step says, do some writing, and then when you're ready to move on to the next part of the workshop, hit play again. The other way is just to watch the video all the way through without pausing so that you get a good sense of the form and one way of approaching that form, and then you can try writing a villanelle later in your own time. Either way is all groovy, do whatever feels best for you. All that you need to take this workshop is something to write with and something to write on. So I'm going to show you using pen and paper, but you can also use a computer, a tablet, heck, you can use your phone, do whatever is easiest for you. As always, big thanks to the National Lottery through Creative Scotland for funding our Return to Form project, and you can watch all of the videos in this project linked up there in the eye. All right, let's go for it! So what exactly is a villanelle? A villanelle is a 19 line long poetic form which uses a set rhyme scheme and two refrains. I'll show you how that structure works in a moment. It's thought that the villanelle actually originated as an Italian rustic song with refrains like a round that was perhaps sung by farmers while working. The version of the villanelle that we know today, however, originated in 16th century France. A poet named Jean Passerat wrote several poems that use this exact series of refrains and this rhyme scheme, and one of those poems became famous. This single poem, which is about a lost turtle dove, established the form for all future villanelles. Poetry power! Eventually, the form spread outside of France, and it became popular in English language poetry around the late 1800s. Probably the most famous example of an English language villanelle is Dylan Thomas's Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, which you might not have clocked originally is a villanelle. The more you know. Alright, so how exactly is a villanelle structured? How does this form work? As always, I think that the easiest way to understand a poetic form is through seeing examples of poetry written in that form, so I'm going to show you the components of a villanelle using the poems written by A. R. Crow and Nadine Aisha Jasset for this season of Return to Form. We asked Crow and Nadine to write villanelles to the prompt New Normal, and each of their pieces is really beautiful and powerful in its own way. You can watch our video featuring Crow and Nadine reading their villanelles through the link in the eye. It does a really great job of actually illustrating how the form works, so I would definitely recommend checking it out. There are three main technical components to a villanelle. The stanza structure, the refrains, and the rhyme scheme. And I'm going to show you how all of them work now using A. R. Crow's poem Make Space. First we have the stanza structure. A villanelle is always 19 lines long and consists of six stanzas. The first five stanzas are tercets, or three-line stanzas. The sixth and final stanza is a quatrain, or a four-line stanza. The second and most signature feature of a villanelle is its use of two refrains which repeat four times each over the course of the poem. Here I've highlighted the first refrain in green and the second refrain in purple. You can see that the first refrain starts the poem and appears on lines 1, 6, 12, and 18. The second refrain ends the first stanza and provides the final line of the poem as well. It appears on lines 3, 9, 15, and 19. 
Now, you may have noticed that Crow's second refrain changes slightly the last time it's used in the final line of the poem. The line, what held them before, becomes what held us before. It's totally okay to alter your refrains throughout a villanelle, and in fact, I think it's a great strategy, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. You may have also noticed that the refrains rhyme with each other, which brings me to the third and final formal component of a villanelle, the rhyme scheme. Villanelles have quite a unique rhyme scheme in that there are only two end rhyming sounds that repeat through the poem, an A rhyme and a B rhyme. Here, I've highlighted the A rhyme in red and the B rhyme in blue. As I noted before, the refrain lines rhyme with each other. They both use the A rhyme. The A rhyme is also used for the ends of the first line in every stanza, not just the refrain in line 1, but also in lines 4, 7, 10, 13, and 16. Every other line in a villanelle ends with the B rhyme. Specifically, the second line of every stanza ends in the B rhyme. So when you're composing a villanelle, you need to come up with a lot of rhymes for the same sound. Seven words that use the A rhyme and six words that use the B rhyme. That is a lot, so when you're composing your villanelle and choosing your line ending words, I would highly recommend choosing words that give you a lot of options for rhymes. Finally here, you may have noticed that Crow uses a mix of perfect rhymes, like slow, no, grow, and half rhymes, like growth and nose. That is totally fine. As I lay out in my Form Fundamentals video on rhyme, there's a lot of flexibility in rhyming, and using half rhyme is a great way to give yourself more options. So there you go. That is how a villanelle works, with the stanza structure, the refrains, and the rhyme scheme. It's worth noting that although traditionally villanelles were written in meter, that is not considered to be an absolute requirement today. So if you want to write it in meter, absolutely knock yourself out, go for it. But if not, not something that you got to do. To help identify villanelles and to help keep the structure clear while you're writing villanelles, there is a code, a key that you can use to work out the structure. And we're going to be using this later in the workshop, so I'm going to lay it out briefly here. The letters in the key refer to the rhymes, whether a line uses the A rhyme or the B rhyme. If the A is capitalized, that's a line that's a refrain. So you have A1 for refrain 1 and A2 for refrain 2. I'll show you this key again later in the workshop so that you can copy it down when mapping out your villanelle. All right, we're going to get to writing our villanelles soon, I promise. But before that, I want to talk briefly about another defining characteristic of the villanelle, one that doesn't really fit on the key, and that is its circularity. So, as I said before, the villanelle likely originated from Italian farming songs with rounds repeated as the farmers worked. The use of rounds and repetition is quite common in traditional working songs and folk music. So think about sea shanties, for instance. They rely on choruses, on repetition of the same line again and again throughout the song. And these repeating lines, these choruses, kind of work as callbacks. They keep calling back to the same place, keep returning to the exact same point. And when you think about it, it's kind of hard to get a sense of progress or to develop a narrative when your song or your poem keeps calling back to the same idea. And that's one of the defining traits of a villanelle. Because it has these repeated refrains, it has this sense of circularity, of almost being stuck in a loop. So this is something to consider when you're composing a villanelle. Is there a way that your poem can actually make use of this circularity, can make use of this feeling of stuckness to actually drive what the poem wants to do? Maybe you want to write it about a situation where you felt stuck, or a recurring dream that you just can't shake, or a pattern that constantly repeats, like night turning into day. So at this point you might be thinking, uh, villanelles sound really rigid and maybe a little bit bland if you're just repeating the same lines again and again. And I see your point, but there is inbuilt flexibility to the refrains of villanelles, which make this form a little bit spicy. Spicy? 
spicy. As I pointed out earlier when we were looking at A.R. Crow's Villanelle, you can tweak the refrains as you go through the poem for quite powerful effect. This is a technique that Nadine Aisha Jasset took full advantage of when composing her Villanelle video call lullaby, so I'm going to show you how it works on her poem now. As you can see here, every time a refrain is repeated in this poem, it is slightly different from the original version. For instance, the first line of the poem, You say I love you to the moon and old, becomes As you say I love you to the moon and old. This technique is also used for the other refrain, the original version, As your voice wrapped around me mumbles me home, becomes just your voice wrapped around me, mumbling me home. The other major alteration Nadine makes here is that she changes the pronouns in both refrains throughout the poem. You say becomes I'll say becomes we say. And the same is true for the other refrain. Your voice becomes my voice and then our voices I love this technique. It keeps the villanelle feeling fresh, and it allows new meaning to breathe through the refrains while still keeping to the core principle of repetition. So that is how changing your refrains throughout your villanelle can work. Guys, I have just one more piece of advice before we get to writing, and that is about enjambment. If you're not familiar with the concept of enjambment, I go over it in my second form fundamentals workshop on structure, but basically it's where a line continues through the line break without stopping. Using enjambment helps a poem flow better from line to line, and this is particularly helpful when it comes to really rigid poetic forms. Because of all of their repetition and because of their strict rhyme scheme, villanelles can feel a little bit stilted if there's no enjambment enjambment if it's just sort of complete sentences or complete phrases one after the other. So I would highly suggest using enjambment when you're writing your villanelle. And speaking of writing your villanelle, I think I've talked your ear off with technical examples and guidance and stuff, so let's get to actually writing your own. Writing a villanelle is a little bit like figuring out a puzzle. There are lots of components, lots of fiddly bits. Every time that you change one thing, it affects all the other things. In that sense, it's a lot like writing a sonnet or a sestina. This workshop is designed for total beginners, so what I've done is I've broken down how to write a villanelle into small steps that I'm going to take you through one by one. We're going to use multiple sheets of paper for drafting and planning, and we're going to generate a ton of material before you start putting it into your villanelle, just to make the process as smooth as possible. All right, guys, let's get to it. We're going to use the same prompt given to Nadine and Crow to inspire their villanelles. New normal. Lots of directions to roll with that. So for this first step of the workshop, let's begin the way that I would suggest you always begin your creative writing process with free writing. If you're not familiar with that technique, I lay it out in my first form fundamentals video, but basically it is stream of consciousness drafting just to get the noggin juices flowing and get ideas down on the page. What emerged from my free write was a focus on the weirdness of working from home that most of us experienced through the pandemic. The lack of clear working spaces and hours, the blurring between weekday and weekend. I decided to roll with this theme for my villanelle because I thought that the circularity of the villanelle would emphasize that sameness, that feeling of daily repetition that you can experience when working from home. So now let's begin by taking five minutes to free write on the idea of new normal. What does that mean to you? Go for it. Awesome. So after free writing, the next step is to pan for gold. And again, if you're not familiar with that, I go through it in my first form fundamentals video. But basically, it's panning through all of the material that you've just free written and looking for shiny nuggets of gold, interesting ideas that you think you might be able to expand into a poem. So as I panned for gold through my free write, there were a couple of phrases that I really liked. For instance, punctuating the week with meaningful exclamation points was cool. 
And this twist on all work, no play by saying it's all work, it's all play. I thought that there might be something in that. I also had some musical phrases around monotone and a lack of rhythm, so I copied all of that onto a new page. All right, now it's your turn, so take some time, go through your free write, and pan for gold. Hopefully now you have some shiny nuggets to work with. The next step is to settle on your first refrain. So how I did this is I went through all of the gold that I had panned from my free write, and I looked at every phrase, every idea, and considered whether any of them had merit and might be able to work as my refrain. So I considered each of these phrases and ideas and tested a few out. I liked this punctuating the week with meaningful exclamation points line, but it's rather long and I didn't really want to repeat it four times, so I decided not to use it as a refrain. What I eventually settled on for a refrain was this idea of it's all work and it's all play. The reason why I like this for one of my refrains is that it's versatile. It doesn't refer to anything specific, so it takes on whatever was last mentioned. And because of that, that refrain can mean something different each time it's used, so it bears being repeated four times over the course of the poem. I also chose this line because it ends in the word play, which is quite easy to rhyme. And that means that I'll have plenty of options when it comes time to draft my second refrain and the other lines using that A rhyme. The other reason I really liked this as a refrain is because it can be changed slightly in a lot of different ways. So you have it's all work and it's all play, but you can also replace the middle word with but or so or or. You can make it into questions. There are a lot of things that you can do to fiddle with that refrain. Remember though, altering your refrains isn't a requirement of the villanelle. You're totally fine to keep them consistent all the way through. Just giving you all the options here. All right, now it's your turn to work out a refrain from the gold that you just panned. As you're working this out, keep in mind that this refrain is gonna be repeated four times over the course of your villanelle. So it should be a point that you wanna emphasize or return to. It also helps if your refrain is versatile, if there are multiple meanings to it or multiple ideas it could yield. And finally, it needs to end on a word with a lot of rhyming options. I know that that's a lot of restrictions, but one thing that opens it up a little bit is that of course your refrains do not have to be complete sentences or complete phrases. They could consist of partial sentences or multiple sentences. They might be questions, exclamations, pieces of dialogue. The sky is the limit here. So now take a moment, go through the gold that you panned and choose your first refrain. The fantastic thing about villanelles is that by writing that one single line, you have just written four lines of your poem, so you're nearly a quarter of the way there. Now that you have that first refrain, the next step is figuring out, okay, what's the other refrain gonna be? So how do we work this out? Well, remember that your refrains need to rhyme with each other, and five other lines in your villanelle also use this same end rhyme. So my next step here is to take the end word of the refrain that you've just drafted and create a rhyme bank for it. A rhyme bank is simply a list of words that rhyme with the word that you've chosen, so I'll show you now on my example. So my first refrain ends with play, so I've written play at the top of my rhyme bank, and now I'm drafting all the words I can think of that rhyme with play. Now you might be tempted to go straight to a rhyming dictionary, but as I say in my Form Fundamentals video on rhyme, I would urge some caution there. See how many words you can come up with yourself first before searching online. A helpful tip for this is to go through the alphabet. So play rhymes with away, bay, clay, etc. All right, your turn. Go ahead now and create a rhyme bank for your A rhyme. Awesome, so now that you have all of these rhyming words, all of these options for the line endings for all of your A lines, including your refrain, it's time to work backwards and draft a bunch of material using these end words. 
So I started a new page and started drafting material. I didn't use all of my rhyming word options from my rhyme bank. Like, I didn't think slay or DJ would be all that relevant. I just picked words that jived with my theme. I was quite keen to use the word day in some way that emphasized the monotony of being stuck at home, so I drafted a few options using that word. And I also drafted a few lines using enjambment. For instance, I wanted to use the word stay, and my first idea was, in my bedroom I stay. But that's Yoda speak, and it sounds archaic, so instead I used enjambment to make it I stay, line break, in my bedroom. Side note here, you might have noticed that a bunch of these lines are in meter. Very roughly, they're using anapestic tetrameter. Again, meter is not a requirement of the villanelle. I just happened to have that meter really stuck in my head, and I couldn't shake it while I was drafting, so I ended up using it here. But again, absolutely no pressure to use meter. Just do whatever feels best for you. All right, your turn. So now work backwards from your rhyme bank and draft as many lines as possible. Go for it. That drafting that you just did will come in handy later in the workshop as well when we're trying to figure out all of the rest of our A rhyme lines, but for right now, it is time now to choose our other refrain. So again here, I considered all of the options, but eventually I settled on, it's a tune without rhythm, this strange day to day. Again, I felt like this line could be repeated multiple times for emphasis, and there were a lot of little adjustments that I could make to keep it fresh. Your turn. So go through all of the material that you drafted with your A rhymes and select one of those lines to be your other refrain. If you're not in love with any of the options, just keep drafting. So rely on your A rhyme bank and keep coming up with lines ending in those words until you find one line that will work for your refrain. Go for it. Amazing! Now you have both of your refrains! You're pretty much halfway there with your villanelle already. You have grown the bones of this poem. For the next couple of steps, we're going to stick those bones onto the skeleton of the form. Yeah, it's not a great metaphor. What I mean is that we're now going to set up our drafting page using that key that I showed you earlier so that you can start filling in those refrains where they need to go. If you've taken my workshops on the sonnet or the sestina or really any other form which requires certain lines or words to go in certain places, you'll be familiar with this step. We're simply mapping out the poem on a single page so you know where everything goes. Here, I've numbered the lines, leaving a space between the stanzas. On the right-hand side, I've marked out the key, and I'll have this key up for you on the step screen so that you can copy it out from there. All right, go ahead now and lay out your map for your villanelle using the key on the next screen. Now that you've created the map, the next step, of course, is to fill it in. But before we do that, we've got a decision to make. Which order should your refrains go in? One of your refrains will open your poem, and the other one will close your poem, so the order that you put them in is pretty significant here. You might already know what order you want them to appear in, but in case not, here's some guidance to help you choose. I actually made little cutouts of my refrains and arranged them on my map so that I could visualize each placement. That is a little bit extra. <laughs> it's not the way that you have to do it, but it did end up helping me. There is one place in a villanelle where your refrains appear back to back, and that's the final two lines of the poem. Try each option for placement and then try reading them aloud in each order and seeing which flows best. All right, your turn. Take some time now and choose the order that you want your refrains to appear in. You might want to test it out collage style like I did, or just pick an order and roll with it. Whatever works for you, go for it. Quick and easy step next. Now that you've determined the order of your refrains, we're just going to fill them in on your map. 
So just go through your map now and fill in the refrains where indicated by the key. I've done this in Sharpie so that you can see it on screen, but I would highly suggest doing that in pencil. That way, if you want to make slight alterations to your refrains throughout the poem, it's super easy to erase and rewrite. Okay, pause at the next screen and fill in your Villanelle map with your refrains in the order that you chose. Guys, let's take stock for a moment. You now have a Villanelle map that's almost halfway filled in, a rhyme bank for all of your A rhymes, lines drafted for all of your A rhyme lines, and remembering way back all of that gold that you panned from your free write. That is a lot to work with, so stick with it, let's keep rolling on, and let's keep filling in the rest of your Villanelle map. At this point, we're going to return to the list of possible A rhyme lines that we drafted when we were trying to come up with our second refrain. I had already used day as the end word in my refrain, so I ticked off all of the lines that I drafted which used that as their end word, as I didn't want to repeat that end word. Next, I just kept flipping back and forth between that drafting page and my Villanelle map filling in the A lines on the map with the material that I'd drafted. Where the lines used in Jam Mint by carrying on into the next line, I added that material too, and in some cases I added more material to make what I had work. And again, I would highly suggest doing this in pencil so that it's easier to try out multiple options without making a mess. Okay, your turn. So go back to the list of A rhyme lines that you developed earlier and see if you can fit them into the appropriate places on your Villanelle map. Take as long as you need here, try out different options, move things around, alter the lines if you want to, whatever you need. You got this. Whoa, we're over halfway there. Whoa, villanelles are great. I'm a poet, not a singer. Guys, you can probably guess the next step. We need to come up with our B rhyme and lines for our B rhyme. Let me show you how I did it, and I will give you some tips on how you can go about it. So I would suggest working out your B rhyme by first drafting the middle line of your first stanza connecting up your first and second refrains. I did this on a new sheet of paper so that I had plenty of room to test out options. For my first stanza, I needed to connect the lines It's a tune without rhythm, this strange day to day, and It is all work, it is all play. I drafted a few options, thinking about monotony and sameness, and first I came up with I repeat my routine again and again. I liked that, so I tested out the B rhymes. Again has some rhymes, then, pen, ten, when, but I needed six words, and I couldn't find another one that I liked. There was men, but I didn't want men in this poem, so I tried another option. Without a commute, it all feels the same. Now that's not bad. Same has a lot of rhyming options. However, same is a half rhyme with day, the A rhyme, and I wanted to distinguish the A and B rhymes more, so I decided not to go with that one. At this point, I was feeling a little bit stuck for inspiration, so I went all the way back to the gold I'd panned ages ago, and I remembered that material I'd written about what you don't need to deal with when you work from home. No high heels, no commute, no gross meal deals for me! I really liked that and I settled on that eventually for a couple of reasons. One, there are about a bajillion rhymes with me, but also it meant that the poem started by emphasizing something positive about working from home, so it set up a tone shift later for when I got to the negative aspects of it. Solid stuff. All right, your turn. So try now drafting line two of your Villanelle connecting the refrains in line one and line three. And just ensure that this line ends in a word that has plenty of rhyming options. All right, go for it. For the next step, y'all know what I like to do when I need to rhyme? It's rhyme bank time, episode B. Same exact process as before, guys. You're just setting up a rhyme bank for your B rhymes. 
around the alphabet if it helps. Consult a rhyming dictionary once your noggin runs out of ideas. Just get a bunch of rhyming words down on the page. Okay, go for it now and write out your B word rhyme bank. So when I had you draft lines from your A rhyme words, I asked you to draft a lot of material first and then to fit it onto the map. And I'm actually going to ask you to take a different approach with these B rhyme lines and draft them directly onto your Villanelle map. That's because your map is already most of the way filled in and there's a lot of context, a lot of poetry there for your B rhyme lines to fit into. So it's actually easier to draft them into that context. As I said before, this feels a lot like trying to fit pieces into a weird puzzle, but it is worth it and let me show you how I did it. So I started here by filling in my second line that I drafted earlier. Then I just kept going back and forth between the B rhyme bank and the Villanelle map, filling in potential end words and drafting material that fit with the end words and the context. When I got stuck, I just returned to the gold that I'd panned and used some of that material. And after I'd filled in much of the piece, I went back through and I altered the refrain slightly to make them support what I wanted to say. For instance, in line 15, I changed the phrase, it is all play, to all it can play, to make it flow better into line 16, is this monotone music which soon will fray. I ended up altering the refrains a lot throughout my villanelle, pushing the form nearly to its breaking point. Again, guys, this is optional. If you want to keep your refrains exactly consistent all the way through, that is totally fine as well. All right, guys, go for it now. Try filling in the rest of your villanelle map, drawing upon those B rhymes that you have and fitting your poetry into the context of the structure that you've already created. Give yourself time for this. Be patient with yourself. Do trial and error. Write in pencil. You got this. Go for it. Congratulations! You now have the first draft of your villanelle. Yes! I'm just going to take you through a couple more steps in this workshop to help you edit it, but the hard work is done. Well done. So if you're anything like me, your desk is probably a mess at this point, covered in maps and rhyme banks and line drafting and all sorts of creative chaos. In order for you to actually be able to read what you've written, the next step now is to start a fresh page in your notebook and copy out a clean version of your poem. As you copy out this clean version, it's up to you whether you include line numbers or the key. I was running out of room on my page, so I just copied the text. And at this point, you can also add a title if you'd like. So I'm calling my villanelle the Work From Home Blues. So now go ahead and copy out your villanelle onto a fresh page and add a title if you fancy it. Go for it. Hopefully that gave you a delicious sense of accomplishment to see the first draft of your villanelle complete and all laid out. Of course, it might have also made you go, oh dear, this poem is weird, which is a totally valid response. Guys, this is just a first draft and you have all the time that you need to go back in and edit it. I'm not going to lead you through every step of editing, but I'll get you started here. For the final step in this workshop, I'm going to ask you to read your villanelle aloud. This is a great way of catching any clunky bits and seeing if any of it just doesn't make sense or doesn't flow. All right, I'll give mine a go. It's a tune without rhythm this strange day to day. No high heels, no commute, no gross meal deals for me. So though it's all work, it's also all play. The clock hands have withered and wasted away so I can't tell midnight from a quarter to three. The tune has no rhythm in this day to day that once had a beat before it gave way to this slippery schedule where time's melted free so it is all work. And it is all play, and there's nowhere to go, so I simply stay in my bedroom and chain drink my tea to this tune without rhythm, this strange day to day. 
And God, what I'd give for a beach holiday where I'd sip margaritas beneath a palm tree, because here it's all work. All it can play is this monotone music, which soon will fray my poor nerves, but there's no changing key to this tune without rhythm. This day after day in which life is all work. And it is all play. I might need a nap. There are some clunky sections in there that I realized while I was reading it aloud. I'm definitely going to go back in and rework some of the transitions, and I want to keep fiddling with that final line, but that's where we're going to leave it for today. It is your turn now, final step of the workshop, so go ahead and read your villanelle aloud. All right, hopefully reading it aloud gave you a better sense of any awkward sections so you now know what you need to work on. As you edit your villanelle, you might want to play more with enjambment or add transition words or tweak your refrains. Tons of options here, just keep toying with it and seeing what comes out. But for today, that is all. We're going to leave the workshop there. That is a wrap on the villanelle! Guys, I really hope that this workshop was helpful to you in writing your villanelle, and if you'd be comfortable sharing what you wrote, I would absolutely love to read it. You can pop your villanelles in the comments below or share them with us on social media. All of our handles are in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions on how to write in this form, pop them in the comments. I am more than happy to help. We are rolling along swiftly with this season of Return to Form, and the next form that we're going to be tackling is found poetry. This is such a cool form. Basically, you create poetry from other sources, other text, like making a collage. The wonderful Sarah Grant and Tyrone Lewis have written gorgeous found poems for us that we're going to be premiering soon, and of course I'm going to have a workshop all about that form too. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, and ringing that bell icon. It really does make a difference to our work. You can also directly support what we do and receive a lot of fabulous perks by signing up to our Patreon for as little as a pound a month. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and happy writing.